Welcome to my YouTube channel where I'm going to be talking about tricks and tips for the artist. I'm going to be showing you the difference between transparent and opaque colors and what colors to mix together to get those muted tones that we love in some of those paintings, um, even some of the old masters, how to get those muted tones to get some of these colors for something like this. So stay tuned, I'm gonna show you. You've heard the saying, keep it simple, stupid, the kiss principle, or less is more. Nothing against my colorist friends out there, but I like a smaller variety to choose from for my paints. And I suggest people do that when you're beginning, because if you don't, you're gonna get so confused with all these different colored paints. So keep that in mind. Simplify. Again, you could just use this color, this color, and this color, and white, and mix all the colors of the color wheel with these three. And beautiful, bright, vibrant colors. Okay, I'm gonna show you my paint collection. This is what I paint with, and generally they're not all on my palette at the same time. I usually only use a limited number at one time. But we're gonna talk about the difference between opaque and semi-opaque, semi-transparent, and transparent paints. Um, I use the Michael Hardings because they're my favorite, and um, you should try them, but or try any good paint brand. And I recommend if you're even a beginner artist, if you buy the student grade paints, they're gonna be a little bit frustrating. If that's all you can afford, do it. But my suggestion might be to stick with three colors to start with and buy a good brand of an ultramarine blue, transparent, a cadmium yellow, and a uh, usually a magenta or a an alizarin crimson. So those three colors, you can do every color of the color wheel plus a white, and you're going to save money just by buying three, four expensive paints and you paint long enough, you'll figure out why. But anyway, opaque colors, everything in this category over from here to the right are opaque colors. They're opaque because they're, they're thick. They're, they, you put them down and you can't see through them. That's the whole point. And this is cobalt teal and a phthalo turquoise. Um, but all of these, you can usually tell the, the paint on the back will tell you whether or not it is opaque or not. Do you see that on the bottom left? So look at your paints. This is semi-opaque and this is semi-transparent, the yellow ochre. I use those almost as if they were opaque. But then you've got your transparent colors on this side. This is a phthalo green ultramarine blue, magenta, or if you have an alizarin crimson, transparent oxide red. So these are, to me, the faster drying paints, not to me, but to everybody in the world, because there's they dry faster than these on this side. These on this side may have some white or some kind of other um, oil or some other element in there that keeps them from drying. Um, so they are those should be the last things you put on your palette if you're layering. So that's why we all start off with a transparent color because it dries faster and it's see-through. Okay, so let's mix a few. I'll tell you what I usually do. Instead of using white to add to my mixture, sometimes I'll add the unbleached titanium or the king's blue if I'm wanting to keep something in a warmer category. I may stick with this one. I may add the ultramarine blue. I may add a yellow ochre to my colors before I add white. But I may show you some examples. Quickly, this is a similar example of how I would lay out my paints. Um, white, uh, I will put my colors in order, but they're mixed with transparent and semi-transparent. But generally, my, my most darkest, usually I'm gonna have my phthalo green here, which is not there, a transparent oxide red there. These are just some blues 
that usually aren't there, these sometimes I add. So they would normally go probably over here. But um, so white, unbleached titanium, these are what your opaques look like. Look at this transparent right here in the middle next to the red. So you can, it's dark. That's how you're gonna know the transparency. This one's really dark. This is dark, dark, dark. And then your thalo green will be dark, dark, dark. So these are opaque, opaque, um, opaque. This is a semi-opaque. And these are all opaque over here. So for simplicity, I've narrowed it down. I put all my transparent colors on the right. All my opaque colors on the left, again, yellow ochre is a semi-opaque. It just doesn't have a lot of tinting strength. And we're gonna mix. First colors I'm gonna mix are the uh, Thalo Green with the magenta. And look how dark that is. And I recommend you trying this at home just for fun. And um, actually for your own good. So if I wanted to put this color down, I'm gonna put a little mineral spirits in it. Look at that color, how dark blue it is. That's thalo green and alizarin crimson. So it's transparent as you can see. I'm just gonna put just the, the transparent magenta down and just this transparent phthalo down, so you'll know that those are the two that were mixed together for that. And my suggestion, this is a transparent oxide red. You can also use burnt sienna. Look at this, we're going to mix that together with ultramarine blue, also another blackish color and a nice transparent color. So you can warm it up by adding more red or you can cool it down by adding more blue. So I'm gonna show you that. You gotta clean your brush off in between, throw it on your palette. So, okay, so here's the transparent oxide red plus the ultramarine blue. So I'll, I'm gonna add this to the side so you'll see the colors I mixed to get that middle color. So these two, a red and a blue, make kind of a gray. Green and red across the opposite of the color wheel, if you'll notice. There's a lesson to be learned there to get these grayer colors. I'm gonna just make it prettier like that, right? So one thing I'll do, too, is let's say, maybe I wanna cover this whole page, you'll do your transparent colors first. So I'm just gonna mix these two together and we're gonna do this whole, most of this page because of what I wanna show you, putting some opaque colors on top. I'm working on watercolor paper. And now, instead of adding a white, let's say I wanted to, let's say I'm gonna start this over again. Okay, we're going to add these two colors together again, the red and the green. You know, sometimes it's nice to just call out the name. You don't have to know the names. We're gonna add those two colors together. Now, instead of, I'm gonna show you what it looks like. I'm gonna add white to that color. Look at that, that's a nice gray opaque. Now it becomes opaque or semi-opaque or semi-transparent because you've added opaque with a transparent color but look at that when I the cut the tinting strength is going to be much higher on that and you'll be able to cover it up and you cannot see through opaque colors at all if you'll notice I can see through these I can still see the uh, you know granted if you thin this paint out you could see through it but if I put this directly on the canvas, on the palette, you're not gonna be able to see through that gray. Here's another idea. Okay, let's say I wanna warm that up a little bit. I'm gonna add yellow ochre, which is also has an opaque 
quality to it. Look at that color. I might like that color better than the white. So my suggestion too is sometimes to add, it's actually a greenish, a dark green, very opaque color that could be used in a lot of ways. Now, and my other idea is to take cad yellow. I always suggest to people add a yellow first before a white, but of course in this instance it is going to go really green. But look at that. Look at that darker color and it's covering up everything underneath there. You really can't see through it. So it's just kind of a play on and it's going to dry slower. Your opaque colors will dry. They'll be on the cat palette for a long time. You'll come back the next day and sometimes these colors will be very hard. So that's an example. Another idea is to take that color. See this color? It's almost a king's blue. You see that? Let's just put them side by side. They're not much different. This one's much brighter. But let's try it again with these two colors mixed together with the, uh, oh, oh, the king's blue. With the king's blue. Look at that. I'm getting a similar, similar than just adding white, but it becomes a little more vibrant, possibly. Let's just take a smaller brush, put that on top. Look, it's the same color as what we were getting before. But here's what I do a lot of times. Let's get a transparent color. If I want to make, um, let's use this in the blue again. And it's kind of a brown color. Let's add the King's Blue to that. And that makes a nice grayish color. See that? That's very nice. I'm gonna make another little section over here, mixing those two transparent colors again together, the blue and blue and red, basically, or orange if you want to call it that. Now this has got the ultimate, I mean the king's blue added to it. I'm gonna add just white to that. I want you to see the difference because side by side, this one, there's more place for this maybe as a transition. Look at this. It's a transition. And side by side, let's look at them on the palette, I mean on the canvas. If I decided to want to put them side by side, maybe back on this. If I'm, if I'm making some minor adjustments in value, look at that. I just need that just a little bit. So I add my King's Blue first for a value change, and then maybe the white. Another option, of course, would be yellow if you're wanting to warm it up a lot. Let's put those two colors together again. I'm gonna try the yellow ochre mixed with that. And look, there's another value change that's just a slighter value, darker. So it's a little lighter than that dark transparent color. A little more opaque, but also another value change and, and a darker one that you could use if you needed to. So if you're painting animals or anything brown outside or brownish, this is maybe a good color combination. So my suggestion, of course, you layer from the transparent color to the opaque colors on top of that. And um, when I want to sway something warm or cool, I'm not, I didn't put the unbleached titanium on here because it's not a common color but, but I, um, that I know of. But anyway, I'll take the yellow. If I'm trying to warm something up, I'll add just a pinch of this yellow ochre. If I'm trying to use a white, and I'll, I'll look at the difference between that and that, we will put them side by side. And if you're painting, say, a white building or a anything white-ish. This is the white opaque. Look at that on top of that transparent color. I put the solid white out there and look at that. I'll take a close-up of this later so you can see it. Now I'm going to take this white. I might add a pinch of this King's Blue to it because you could just use your that blue but these are maybe some go-to colors. 
that you can use so you don't have to mix a lot of colors a lot of times. I'll put that over here so you can see that color. I'm just making a little abstract colored shapes here. Now here's what I love to show people because let's say I want something to really stand out in a, a brighter color. I'm gonna add a pinch of that cad yellow to, I got a little water going on here. Let's go, I'm gonna start over here. I'm gonna do it over here. So a little pinch, that was too much because that's too bright, too vibrant, but maybe not so much. Let's tone it down just a little bit, have two areas. So you want to make a sun or you want to do, you want to just really make something stand out. You can take this, make sure your brush is really clean. I can take that bright yellow and put it right there and it's going to start standing out more so because it looks like the sun is hitting it. Look at that. So it's going to sit on top. I take that white color right out of the tube and I put it next to that yellow. See, white is actually a blue, mostly blue-ish, a little cooler. Let me take this one that has a little more yellow to it. So I'm not painting an actual picture here. I'm playing with colors. So I'm taking a cad yellow and adding it to that green that I had mixture that I had before. Putting it over here next to this color to warm it up. If I wanted to make a cooler version of that, let's say that was a uh, ultramarine blue, a little bit of cad yellow, I believe. If it wasn't, then maybe it was this with the magenta. Let's try it again with a little bit of yellow ochre. No, that wasn't it either. Could have been that color right there. That's what it was, I believe. It was your uh, <laughs> Lizard and Crimson with the Thalo with a little cad yellow added to it, this color, and then we added more to it um, to do that. But let's add King's Blue to that. It's blue and white. Look at this nice dull color green that I'm gonna put next to that that we had. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? I love that. That is just a beautiful gray color. That was, again, this color, your thalo, your magenta, cad yellow, and then ultramarine blue to get this color. Basically, you're looking at primary colors here, yellow, red, and blue. The green is not a primary color, but, so that's nice. Let's add a lot more blue to this darker color we had here. And then try adding a little bit of yellow to that. So you want to warm it up. The cad yellow is really going to make it another greenish color. Now if I add the ochre to that, I'm going to leave me enough to... Um... See, the ochre doesn't have as much tinting power. So you'd have to add a lot of that. But look at this nice opaque dark green that you have. Now I have just enough to add the King's Blue to this little section. You're just getting a duller. So my point is to get some of these variety of colors, I'm gonna add an opaque blue or an opaque yellow or an opaque Instead of white, I'm gonna to try to make something different to add to these colors to get these grays. So practice this at home.